So team, welcome to ISTQB Foundation Level Certification Training Orientation Session. So today what we're going to do is we'll give you a complete picture of what is this ISTQB is all about, what is this foundational level certification training is all about and what is the eligibility criteria to go for it and the complete picture of how the exam, the syllabus, what is the pass criteria, from where you can write this exam, what is the fee structure, everything that I'll try to give you and I'll definitely leave it for a good amount of time for the question and answers uh, because you might have good amount of questions uh, as it is related to an examination. So before all that, let me put one basic question. How many of you have heard about this ISTQB before or how many of you have um, have a fair idea on this ISTQB is what is all about. How many of you have actually tried the exam previously and probably did not go to and maybe that is the reason that you are attending. Sorry I did not do a poll for this but any, any, any number of people who have attended the exam previously? Let me start from the third question. Anyone attended previously and, and have a good amount of idea on the question? So Pratibha says no, Srinua says no, okay. So looks like nobody has attended, that's good. That's the whole idea of going through the training, going through the exam and everything. How many of you have an idea about it? Does anybody have any idea? I, I will assume that you don't have any idea. I'll start from the scratch. That's not the intent of asking. If, if you need that, you, if you say that you know something, I don't want to build on top of it, but just like, you know, want to get an idea. Did anybody talk to your friends, colleagues and came to know, okay, this course will be like this, little bit, right? So expected answer, get us this little bit, that's fine. So with that, uh, I got the background, like, you know, so let me, let me go ahead and introduce to this uh, without further delay. So, what is an ISTQB is all about? So as it says, it stands for International Software Testing Quality Board. Okay, that is what the abbreviation of it. The agenda is very simple for today. I'll introduce to the ISTQB and what are the different levels in this uh, ISTQB certification. We'll talk about that. Then we'll talk about why this certification is important, why you need to go through the ISTQB certification, what are the benefits you get, not only benefits to the candidate who will go through, it's actually benefits to the organization where you go and work. So there are a lot of companies, as soon as you join as a software test engineer, they will encourage to go and write this particular certification, either this or there is uh, another one called CST. So they encourage any of them to go and write the exam. The advantage that they will get is you will go through good amount of process explanation, process learning, <coughs> thereby the organization expectation is that you will put that process learning when you're actually working in the organization and that will result out a quality product, that will result out a quality software. So when some of the organizations, clients are very particular, especially when it comes to testing. They're not really bothered about who is my development team, who is my designing team, but they are more worried about who is my testing team. Because if the testing is good, I know the quality of the product will be good. So some of the clients are very particular in asking who is my testing team, what are their qualifications, does they have any certifications like IST, QBC, STE. So those kind of questions even come to the uh, you know organizations before handing over the project. So in a way, it is important for as an individual, important for the organization as well. I explained about organizational level, but I don't need to explain how it is important to the individual, right? It's very self-explanatory. You add a lot of value to your profile. That is the first point. The second point is, it's very simple. If I'm a hiring manager, I do a lot of hiring. If I'm a hiring manager, if two people come for the interview with the similar technical skills, similar competencies, and if one of them is certified, one of them is not certified, and if I have to choice, make a choice out of these two, obviously I prefer somebody who has gone through the certification because he has much more better knowledge in terms of 
how the testing works, how the QA works. So I would prefer that. So that's the advantage you're going to get as an individual. Okay, so we'll understand why the certification is important. <coughs> Exam structure, more important. Uh, this is not like other courses that we teach here. It's like uh, QA fundamental testing course or a Selenium Java course or uh, HP UFT course. Here you have to prepare with a very seriousness with a time bound when you want to appear for the exam. I'll show you the exam dates based on your country which you are. So you need to work towards that. Let's say you have an exam in July, you want to work for that July, so you have to take it up that way. It, so you need to understand the exam structure and then you have to prepare from the examination point of view, not like the regular courses that we do. And then we'll understand what is the syllabus for this particular foundational level course that, that you all want to go through. And there are certain questions based on cognitive levels or we call it as K levels in ISTQB terminology. So we'll understand what are those K levels. There are about K1 to K4 and what type of questions that we will get, it, you know, how many questions we'll get it in K1, K2, K3, K4 levels. And we'll also look at how many chapters that we have to complete in this course. And I have completely planned uh, to conduct a small test at the end of every chapter to understand what you have learned. Again, at the end of the entire course, I will be conducting about three grand mock tests. So we have a quiz kind of thing that is already prepared within an IT Learn website. So we'll We'll be doing that. On top of it, I will be handovering you a couple of uh, mock tests in the sense like you know some of the questions, about 500 plus questions, if you go through them, there are highly chances that you will you will get through. So that's how we are going to do it. And then what are the prospects of certifying as an ISTQB professional? And I'll take your Q&A question and answers. So does the agenda clear or anybody wants to know anything more or less, especially more, please let me know, see if I can cover that. Otherwise, we have day one and day two, which are also free sessions. Uh, I'll be introducing anything that I cannot cover today. All right. So this is how it works. So generally, the trend, okay, so Pratibha has a question, which is better, ISTQB or CST? If you are in the very beginning level, if you are just starting in the field of software testing, strongly encouraged to go for ISTQB because it's a very foundational level and if you understand the fundamentals right, you can easily do it. CST is more of, you need a little bit of work experience as well. This without work experience also you can go for it. As long as you have understanding, knowledge, theoretical knowledge and if you apply uh, some of the things then you'll be able to do it. CST I would prefer somebody who has one or two years of experience should go for it. So that's how it goes. All right. Okay, what is ISTQB? As we were talking about, it stands for International Software Testing Qualification Support. This is the website. I'll be walking you through the website in a few minutes. www.istqb.org. This is the main website, but they have a website for every country specific. Right? So because they cannot just manage everything through one major website, so you need to find out regionally what is near to you and you have to go to that particular website. I'll show you from where you can do all that. And then you have to look at what is a office near to you and where you can take the exam and to whom you should apply for and all that. But this is the main website. Okay, what is an ISTQB? It's a non-profit association. It's founded in 2002, headquartered in Belgium. Basically, there are a couple of volunteers from different organizations across the world they came and started this, hey, quality is very important, testing is very important. If proper testing has not happened, the product will have lots of issues, lots of production issues, and fixing those production issues is a much more costlier matter, and it will be a reputation to the company, 
blah 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 so that's where the importance of testing comes in right so do I need to explain the importance of testing for the audience here or do you understand the importance anyway that's part of our course uh, in the chapter one itself but for now if you have to why do you need to test any product just imagine if your product has some issues let's say you are trying to book a ticket could be flight movie whatever it says your ticket is confirmed successful but what if really ticket is not really confirmed what will be the situation that you will be in when you actually the day when you want to travel when you pack everything and you want to go ahead and the ticket is not confirmed what situation that you are in that is still okay probably your travel might delay but think about a situation where you're dealing with the money you're transferring uh, you're transferring some X amount of dollars from your account to somebody's account it says transfer successful but really not transfer happen what is the situation that you are in this is still okay money we can get it back think about healthcare product you go to some investigations for certain particular disease and the machine what it does is a software again think about some defect there cost the life of a person nothing more than that nobody wanted to incur that much cost so that's exactly the, the testing or the importance of thing will come so this organization what they have understood is testing is placing a major role so why can't we form as a group and why can't we introduce a standard in it so that not everybody can just come and do the testing they have to go through some kind of certification so that they are understand the importance of testing they understand what they're actually doing what is the importance of finding the bugs early in the cycle so they came and started this in 2002 in Belgium it's like an autonomous they have its own constitution they have rules and regulations formed by that group the lot of it's composed of volunteer international testing experts as I say from the worldwide testing experts came and, and started this and they are responsible for this ISTQB certified tester scheme worldwide so it's it's every country knows about this it's not that only a particular US or UK or India no, every country knows about this so ISTQ is the world's leading organization for software testing certification the way you have Microsoft related certifications are taken care by Microsoft Sun Microsystems related certifications are taken by you know Oracle testing related ISTQB specifically takes care of those certifications so is it clear what is this organization is all about or any questions to show you the website just go to istqbit.org so this is the main website okay and you can go through their mission and vision etc from all this website I just clicked on about us and here you can see their mission and vision facts and figures what are the stakeholders the stakeholders what is the history behind it all that ISTQB offices where are those just let's click on this uh, I don't know what's happening okay let me click on this so there should be one link which should tell you yeah ISTQB worldwide if you go my mouse is behaving cranky also looks like some virus on my machine okay so if you go here there are about you know four lakh ten thousand certifications in over hundred countries worldwide and you can get the syllabus and everything from here come on
so all this is the main website okay so I'll, I'll talk about each country website as well the next one is like okay fine ISTQB I understand but what are the different levels of certifications they have and which level I should target for so this is the latest picture I have taken it from the ISTQB website as of yesterday because they keep changing these certifications a little bit of course the one that you are going through the foundational level there is no change for it over a period of time but uh, on the left hand side what you see agile and the specializations they go through a lot of changes okay so if you see uh, the bottom one certified tester foundation level so that is what this training is all for and it is also called CFTL certified foundational level uh, foundational level test basically so we are talking about uh, CTFL certified tester for foundation level is what we call so the bottom one is what you're actually targeting for and what is this training is all for once you get through this who can go for this anybody with zero to four five years of experience seven eight years of experience once they get their experience let's say when they become a test lead when they become a QA lead or a project lead for the QA or when they actually get into uh, project management for the QA they should go for advanced level it's basically for the um, technical test analyst, test analyst, QA analyst, test architect. So these kind of people should go for advanced level. People at very experienced level, like you know, uh, they are responsible for managing a testing team, or they are responsible for the entire testing organization, or they have to improve the process within the organization for the testing purpose. So then they should go for, let me try to highlight if I can do, they should go for this one, that is expert level. So we'll start with the foundation level, that's what this course is all about and you will go through this after gaining some experience like 7-8 years of experience you can go for advanced level and then once you become responsible for a director or a manager to take care of some testing organization you can go for core, uh, expert level. So these are the core certifications of ISTQB, which has been there for almost since 2002. So this center one is not changed for all these days. What is being changed is whatever is there on the left and right, based on the industry, how they move, they are changing that. For example, if you see, nobody is following a waterfall model uh, nowadays. It's more of an agile delivery. So to take care of that Agile, and they have introduced this concept called Agile Tester, foundation level, advanced level. It's purely for Agile development and Agile releases. Don't worry too much on that. During my foundation courses, I'll also be talking about Agile delivery. But if somebody specifically wants to focus on that, then you should go for this. Otherwise, this is more than enough. Then there are some specialized, like you know, automotive tester, usability tester, mobile based testing. Based on the industry, they keep introducing this. Security testing, automation test engineer. So there are again foundation and advanced in specializations. So this, don't get confused, there are so many levels. All we're going to target is this. Any questions on what level that you're going for? Okay, model-based testing itself is a separate concept. It's, it's like uh, if, if you have to test with so many combinations, etc. For example, you have a page with so many checkbox, so many radio button, so many combinations. You will have to combine, you will get into so many test cases to test. So then you will apply a model based technique there. Like that there are so many special techniques to do the model based testing and it's, it's all for that. 
Okay, Sucheta says, I want to know more about foundation level with Agile. Okay, so that's more of, for that first of all, I don't know how many of you are comfortable in Agile delivery first. What is an Agile methodology, how it works, and where does the testing fits into that Agile? So that course related to that. So you have to be comfortable in Agile delivery first. You have to be comfortable in all your testing deliverables. And then where does this uh, testing fits in Agile? <coughs> so that you have to go through. So I, I'm, I don't want to discourage you to target that. You can target that Agile tester, but even going through CTFL, understanding your Agile delivery also works fine. But if you want to target Agile tester, that is also fine. No, okay, Sheila has a question. Selenium and SOAP UI, they are totally different. Selenium has a separate certifications. Selenium does not have any certifications actually. It's a core Java certification, Java certification that you have to do. Um, SOAP UI also does not have any certification. If, if it is there, it should be from uh, SOAP UI tool, whoever has developed Oracle, whatever. But HP Quick Test Professional or UFT has its own certification. HP Quality Center has its own certification. But they are more of specific automation to that tool only. Here, they concentrate on how generally automation happens. What is functional testing automation? What is load performance testing automation? What is security testing automation? They touch on everything. But you are talking about more of a tool specific. All right, is, a, is this levels clear? The same thing you would find it in the website also. Let me first erase all drawings. So, sorry, if you go to the website, you would find, uh, yeah, if you find it here, foundation level in a nutshell, that's from, if you go for certification, foundation level, and then you have foundation level in nutshell, so you even get this picture. So I've taken it from this website. Okay. Okay, why ISTQB? I told you, international recognition of acquired competencies and skills in software testing. So you will get to know what are the different competencies required, skills required in the field of software testing, which are recognized globally. It's not that an India specific or a UK specific or a US specific, everybody understands uh, when you go through it. It's promising a higher level of reliability of the applications being developed due to efficient and cost effective testing practices. You will be learning various practices during the course of this and the expectation is that after you go through certification, you'll apply them when you do the testing and that will result in uh, a good amount of quality for the product, reliability for the product, higher level of reliability for the product. Consulting companies with certified staff can offer higher levels of service to customers. I, I talked about this point in the very beginning. Some of the customers are very particular when before giving the project. So they want to check who is my testing team, what are their qualifications, do they have any certifications. If not, uh, I've seen some of the companies like Accenture and all. When you join an organization, they would prefer somebody who have a certification. If they don't find somebody who has a certification, but somebody is really good at in testing, they will hire and they will put a mandate within the six months you have to go through the certifications because the clients ask for it. So that's the importance of them. Hiring preference for the certified candidate compared to non-certified candidate. I give my example. If two people are coming with similar skills, with certification, without certification, Generally, people go for hiring with certification. And this certificate, the CTFL, Certified Testing for Foundation Level, is valid for the lifelong. It's like your graduation memo. Whereas, on the other side, if you see, for example, any .NET certification or any QTP UFT certification, 
when the new version comes with new features, it's always encouraged to go and write it again. So typically the validity will be about three to four years. Because three to four years, a lot of features might have changed, so you should go and write that certification again. But these concepts are not expected to change a lot. Like in since 2002, we are talking about 2016, they're all valid. So this is like lifelong valid. Okay, so any questions at why we should go for it? Uh, anybody wants to add anything from your experience? Why we should go for it? Or any, anybody's company sponsoring here? That they might have told you, go and write the exam and you can claim that fees will pay for it. There are a lot of companies that does that. All right, structure, examination structure. You will get 40 multiple choice questions, all multiple choice questions, one point for each correct answer. Yes, you can do core and then you can go for agile or you can directly go for agile also. But my suggestion is like the core one will cover a lot of fundamental topics so the preference is that way. Okay, so one question will have one point and the good thing is there is no negative marks. There is no negative mark so it's all point system. And the success criteria, so you have 40 questions and if you want to get through the exam, if you just answer 26 questions, you are good enough. 26 are more points. If you can take care of that. The good thing about this course is every batch will have about 20-25 people and uh, they write on their own timelines, take time like three months to four months. But we hear a good feedback at the end of four or five months that almost 20-20 two people say we have cleared the exam. So that's the success for us in terms of training. So if you attend like 26 questions, you are good at. Duration of the exam, 60 minutes. If you're writing in your preferred language and if you're writing in your non-local language, they'll give you 75 minutes, I think, 15 minutes of grace period. But everybody generally writes in English, so one hour. The fees is around $250. If you're writing it from in India, it'll be around 4,500 to 5,000 rupees. So that's examination fees. Any questions on the structure, examination structure? Good thing is no negative marking. 65% if you can attempt, you'll get through. One hour is the duration of the exam, 40 are the questions. And the fees is not so big that you can reappear if you don't get through. I don't think that will be the situation. If you really take it seriously and go through all my content, go through all the questions that we give, you should clear in the first attempt. Syllabus. This is the complete syllabus that we have to go through. So many topics. It's divided into six categories. The first one talks about fundamentals of testing. In that we'll try to understand why is testing necessary, what is software testing is all about. There are seven testing principles, a fundamental test process, psychology of testing, code of ethics. The second is testing throughout the software life cycle. It's not like, okay, testing comes only after development is complete, nothing like that. Testers are involved right from the day one of the project. So we need to understand different software development models. That's where exactly I'll introduce to Agile also for the people, for the benefit of the people who don't know. Then we'll, we'll see slightly how testing can be variant in Agile. So we'll talk about software development models 
different levels of testing, different types of testing, what exactly maintenance testing is all about, and then we'll talk about static testing techniques. What is static testing techniques and the process reviews and what are the different tools used for static testing? We'll talk about that. Then we focus on test design techniques. Basically, we understand the test development process, categorizing your test design techniques, specification-based techniques like black box, white box, gray box testing, experience-based techniques, and how to choose a particular technique for a particular requirement. Basically, how do you prepare your test cases? For designing the test cases, you should understand the techniques, black box, white box, gray box, and then you'll apply that for creating the test cases. Then comes the test management. Where do you write your test cases? Where do you write your test plan? Where do you maintain it? So how typically test organization works? How does the test planning and estimation happens? Uh, Test progress monitoring, how do you monitor how much testing is completed, how much pending, basically for the test lead and the test manager, what kind of software configuration management tools will use it. Then we'll talk about risks and testing, so what is the risk and testing, what is incident management, all that. Then comes what are the tools supporting for the testing. We don't go drive into any tool like Selenium or Load Runner or or Quality Center, but we'll touch upon all the importance of those tools. What are the different types of testing tools available in the market? Effective use of the tools? What are the potential benefits and risks that you get it? How any tool can be introduced into any organization? What is the criteria that they have to look for it? So all that will look. We will understand. So this is the overall content. <coughs> so we'll have to go through about the six chapters. And each chapter, I told you at the end of every chapter, I'll, I'll kind of conduct a mock test to understand how much you have learned from it. And, and each chapter takes about three to four sessions. So on an average, we would need about 24, 25 sessions to learn this whole thing. And I told you uh, there are about 40 questions and in ISTQV terminology they call it as K levels or called cognitive levels. What are these cognitive levels? So K1, K2, K3, K4 types. In K1 type of questions you'll simply remember what we discussed in the class. You'll recall from your memory you don't need to apply any knowledge as such. You'll just remember what we discussed, recall it, recognize, and you're done. You'll answer it. K2 type of questions, you'll understand. You need to explain the reasoning. You need to explain why we need to do that way. You need to give some reasons. You need to compare, categorize to do the K2 type of questions. Again, comes from the knowledge what we discussed. K3, you need to apply some. It could be a technique, it could be a, a method that we discussed, so you have to apply for it. So K3 level, little higher level. K4 totally depends on your analysis. I might have discussed an example, something similar to it. I might have discussed a technique. Now you have to analyze it. Again, don't worry too much. We will get you introduced to some set of sample questions, so that will be easy for you to analyze. So that's the type of K levels you will get it in CTFL, K1, K2, K3, K4. How many of each category? K1 you will get 20 questions, K2 you will get 12 questions, K1 is just remember, recall and answer it 20. Little bit of categorization, analysis, not analysis, categorization, um, just go back, this one, explaining the reasons, giving examples of type 12, and then uh, applying and using the techniques is about 8, oh, yeah, foundation level, I'm sorry for that, yeah, I think I confused, but in foundation level, they don't apply much of analysis knowledge, but you will, I have seen the trend, one or two questions you will get, so we'll prepare for the worst. Okay.
So that's a way to only 40 questions you will get. Now when it comes to chapter wise, I told you there are six, six, uh, six chapters. Chapter 1 you will get 7 questions, chapter 2 6 questions, chapter 3 3 questions, 4 12 questions, 5 8 questions, 6 4 questions. So that's also the way it will become 40. Any questions on this? Any questions on the questions types? Don't worry, we have all the material, we have ran it multiple batches, people are succeeded, so we will go with that level. The trend or the prospects of certifying the ISTQB, I have the data up to 2014, but I'm 200% confident if I have to take up to 2016, the graph will go more towards the upside. Definitely not even a flat or not even a down, it's more towards the up. People who uh, complete the certifications and the job prospects and everything is is very high. So these are some of the references. I told you istqb.org. Like you can always go through this. Like you know, the syllabus. Uh, I pick it from here. Then yeah. If you wanted to go for a specific country, right, you should go for ISTQB worldwide and uh, graph geographic coverage where you where you belongs to, and it'll show you all that there. Then, for example, somewhere it'll show the list of the countries. Uh, <clears throat> your local member board. If you go into this, you will find all. So this is where you will find all the countries, American, Australia, <coughs> Bangladesh, Belgium, Brazilian, you will find everything. Suppose if I am from India and just go here, come on, I have some virus in my machine I think. Okay, if I go here, so this is where the website specific to India. and uh, when it is started, blah, 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 who are the point of contacts, um, what are the exams, come on, sorry, what are the exams that they'll conduct. On the right hand side, you should see exam date somewhere. If you go to this website, you have to go to this website first. And then you can find it out from there, when are the next exams. For example here, foundation exam, what is that link? Foundation exam dates. If you go here, foundation exam dates and depending on which city that you are in. Suppose if I'm from, just an example, if I'm from Hyderabad, I can appear in these dates. Coming 7th, today we are in 3rd, coming 7th I can appear, 11th I can appear, 18th I can appear, 25th I can appear. In June I can appear 1st, 11th, 22. So up to June the dates are there and next they will put it for the next month dates in June. So like that you can, almost every month you will see the exam gets conducted and uh, so all you need is first you do your preparation and once you're prepared then you can go and book a slot. Previously the centers used to be very less so it's the other way. First we used to book a slot and then we used to write an exam but now you don't worry. First you prepare and then you can go and book a slot. So there will be a lot of parametric centers from where you can take up this exam. So that is about from which country specific and how you can do that. So you can get all these from this PPT. So it's all about your time for questions and answers. Let me know if you have any specific questions.
Anyone has any questions about the course content? If you, if you miss any sessions, the recording video will be available on the website. You have to just, so what will happen is once you complete your membership and everything, you will be given an access with some credentials with user ID password. You have to go to www.itln.com, log in with your credentials, online video section, ISDQB section, you have to go through the videos, that's it. And the videos will be available for you depending on your membership access, three months, six months, one year. They all, or anytime you can go and watch them. Mm, uh, if you if you have registered for this, you should have already re received an email with a day one, day two, and then complete schedule. Uh, how to make payment and all that, please take it uh, with the itlearn.com technical help. You can write a mail to learn at itlearn.com. Just you have to do learn at itlearn.com. Or you can do sales dot elearn at gmail dot com. So any of these two email IDs you can write an email and then they will walk you through the process for making the payments and everything. Uh, I want to take more questions on the course here. It will I told you six into four, twenty-four sessions and about three mock tests. So you can plan it for one month. Nagamani, it's like 30 days, including the grand test and everything. All right, anybody has any other questions? Just look into the calendar, email might be there in your inbox with the complete schedule, day one, day two. Typically, we do a day one and day two as free sessions. Not sure about this one, just double check and then we'll we'll continue. All right. So we would be starting uh, immediately after day one and day two, so so take a call so that you know you won't miss out anything. <coughs> All right. Let me know if anybody has any questions. Otherwise, you can wind it up for the orientation. All right, team. So, see you in Devon. Uh, good morning, good evening, good night, wherever you're from. See you on Devon.